I might be in Bali on a beach, right? But I know that I need to wake up 7 a.m. or 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. and do all, everything on my task list. Otherwise, it's just gonna, I'm gonna come back to a load of mess. If, you, if you'd spoke to me like five, six years ago, we probably wouldn't get along, mainly because of like my personality and like, I was just a very, very different person. I was very, very money oriented. Now I'm like, all right, I've got, I've got money, I can survive. What's next? Like, how, how can I level up people around me? The searching, I don't know how many casual dashes there are in the world. There's a lot of Jason Millses. So how important is it to have that unique name? Because if you Google Jason Mills, I think there's a serial killer on page one. It is all about growth, like is not linear. Like for there to be light days, there obviously has to be dark days. Hi, and welcome to the Online Performance Podcast. I've got the pleasure today of being joined by a very successful online entrepreneur. He goes by the name of Kazra Dash. I know him fairly well. I've met him over the last six months, met up a couple of times, uh, and I'm going to introduce him to you guys now. So uh, welcome, Kazra. Thanks for having me on, Jason. It's a pleasure, absolute pleasure. Um, so for, for those people that don't know who you are, give us a, a brief introduction to yourself. So I am primarily known to be the website recovery guy. Um, I have also started scaling out my YouTube channel and my Twitter as well and you just can't get rid of my face. So you'll load up Facebook, you'll probably see me there. You'll load up Twitter, you'll see me there. There's guys that go to conferences now and they're like, I see you everywhere, I can't get rid of you. Um, and yeah, so that's my primary thing that I'm known for. And then I've also got like the side businesses that we'll probably discuss, like the search rules that does the link building, the auto blogging that does the content and the backlink doctor that does the disavows as well. Brilliant. And yet another guest who is quite clearly, for those that are watching this on YouTube, quite clearly a fair bit younger than myself. So, you know, pretty young guy and having a lot of success online. So we're going to delve into that today, kind of get into the nuts and bolts as to kind of what drives you, where you're going. Is there an end game for, for Kazra Dash? Uh, and also what I quite like with yourself is you're not one of these people that makes money online and hides behind a computer. You're out there in the real world as well. So really want to kind of delve into that a little bit more. We're going to start each of these podcast episodes with the same question. So I'm going to fire this question at you now. And the question is, what is online success? What does that mean to you? So this is a really good question. And before we actually went live, me and Jason were talking about this. Because whenever I go on podcasts, I say, don't send me eight the questions. Just hit me with them. And this is the one question where I've actually had to think about it. And I think digital success can be multiple meanings so for some people it can be the amount of money in their bank account for me at the minute it's not more as such the amount of money in the in the bank account it's more so how many views am i getting on on youtube how many subscribers am i getting how many followers am i getting on twitter how many people are liking my posts um and it's just a way of tracking performance. It's not it's not as such to say like, oh, I, I got fifty likes and Jason got twenty likes. It's not it's nothing to do with that because I'm essentially removing my ego out of it. But it's more so about tracking performance, how many eyeballs are on me and what's the general consensus. Do people think I am an absolute legend? Do people love me? Do people hate me? Because um, that's also important as well. Because if you're ruffling up feathers, you're probably doing something right. Um, but you obviously need to do it the correct way. So I don't know if you remember a few months ago, I was getting a lot of hate from the, the um, niche site guys, the, what, the guys on Twitter that have been hit. But then I released my YouTube video and it was probably my most viewed YouTube video based off the back of the tweets that I was doing, like just going in on, on niche site guys. And the reason why I'd done that is to build hype up about my YouTube videos. And it worked. Um, like I think I hit a thousand subscribers in less than 30 days. I think I've done it in like three weeks or something. I hadn't even uploaded a, a YouTube video and I had hit 200 subs um, because of the hype that I'd created on another platform. So for me at the minute, it's probably about the, the amount of eyeballs that are actually viewing the Casual Dash product, the Search Roo product, the auto blogging product. Absolutely. So so for you really at the moment, it's a, it's around attention. And yeah. do you think do you think that's going to change through the the course of your career? Is that something that at the moment that's that's super important to you, but maybe in five, ten years 
that online success could mean something different. Yeah, definitely. Like what what a lot of people forget as well is that I also have my own websites. Like I know that some people preach like their courses or their what whatever else they're selling, but I actually do have my own website. So when I'm going to conferences or when I'm doing a tweet, it's all about the actual viewership and the amount of eyes. But the other side of me, when I am actually in the trenches doing the actual work, whether it's link building or whether it's doing the actual content audits on my own websites, it's, it is get, like trying to gain more traffic, trying to gain more clicks every single month. So yes, it, 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 do, it definitely does change day by day. It depends on what I'm actually working on as well. Brilliant. No, I love that. I love that answer because I think sometimes it's everyone has a completely different metric by what they might deem success to be. Uh, and, and I think I, I, I'm a big preacher of attention and that attention can be different things for different people. But ultimately for me, if you have attention, then that can be monetized. So I think that's, that's a really interesting answer that you've given there. So thank you for that, Kazra. So, yeah, no so what made you get into this? What, how did you first find your way into this crazy world of online business? So I probably built my very first website on like HTML um, when I was probably about 15, so 11 years ago now. And I made this website and my brother saw it and he was like, oh, that's quite a cool looking website. Bearing in mind, like it, it, it was like, <laughs> I don't even think it was responsive to, to yeah. say the least, right? And then he essentially got me to build his website for him. And then he, he, I built the website. I think I built I built it on Wix at the time. Again, I, I was young. I was stupid. <laughs> then, like maybe a year after that, he got me to build, or he sent me a client through. Like, like it was one of his friends, and he said, "Hey, Kaz, do you know how to build an e-commerce website?" And I was like, "Yeah, I know how to build an e-commerce website." Didn't know anything about e-commerce. <laughs> like searching the next day, what is e-commerce? So I built him an e-commerce website and. It must have took me like seven months to build this e-commerce website. Mainly, it wasn't down to the fact that I didn't know how to do it. I very quickly learned about WooCommerce and WordPress and stuff. But it was mainly down to the fact that it was the amount of products that he had on his website. And I didn't know anything about outsourcing the work. So if you can just imagine 15-year-old or 16-year-old cars just going, <laughs> typing away, building out this website. Actually, I was 18 at the time when I was building the website. So it took me about six months. I got paid like a few grand. And um, I also got flown out to his offices as well in, in California and saw his whole operation. It was a business card company. So essentially you would log onto the website, you would order your business cards and you would print it and you'd send it out to you. And after about two or three weeks after coming back from California, he was like, hey, Kaz, you've built me this sexy looking e-commerce website, but where's the customers? And I'm like... I think you need to do SEO. Um, so essentially, that's when he asked me, like, do you know how to do SEO? I was like, yeah, of course I do. So again, searched what is SEO, and that's how <laughs> I, that's how that was the first like taste that I got of SEO. The, the the good thing about those times were so like if you think like we're probably talking about 2017, 2018 mm -hmm. now. You all, all you really had to worry about, especially in e-commerce, was like the product, um, the page titles. So if you had like a business card for dentists or business cards for doctors or whatever, you've, you're probably on already on page one as soon as you make those tweaks and make the meta descriptions. Now it's a lot harder. Obviously, you need unique content on the category pages. You need unique product descriptions. Back then, it was like duplicate content was just. Yeah. loved by google and you you would just rank so that was the first taste that i ever had when it comes to seo and did you did you you said you were doing that at the age of 18 did you have a kind of traditional education up to that point uh did yeah. you do education beyond that or did you kind of leave school and go straight into kind of teaching yourself online so SEO i am um, I went to, so I, I done high school, finished high school, finished college, went to university, graduated university as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got like a, a bachelor's degree in digital marketing or interactive media marketing. Um, so while I was doing that, it, it was kind of weird, right? Because I was just like self-taught like developer. Mm -hmm. 
And when I would go into like the actual classes, they would be doing something that I'd learned like two, three years ago, like back in college when I was like do, like learning on YouTube and stuff. So very quickly, like I was able to like systemize a lot of like the coursework. One thing I will also say is I completely outsourced all of my like actual like essays and stuff like that in 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 uh, university because I'm absolutely shocking at grammar, so I literally just hired someone to do it for me. Um, but I yeah, so I done university and then I was like self taught on like development and stuff like that, and then um, I got like a nine to five as a web developer down in Northampton. And while I was doing the web development side of the stuff, I that's when I, I essentially got outreach to the, by that guy to essentially build the website, and that's when I learned SEO. Um, and then after that, I went and done web development at a SEO agency. And then a year after that, that's when I met James Dooley, which is my business partner, um, and we've just partnered up on like loads of things now. Okay, so you've, you've mentioned James, so let's touch on James for a, for a second there. How instrumental has as meeting someone like James been, do you think, for your career? And oh, you massive. You- massive. Yeah. Um, like, I I speak to people that aren't, like, in the digital marketing realm. They've just got, like, a regular nine to five, and there's nothing wrong with those guys. But I speak to them now, and I say, like, you need a mentor. And James, by far, has been, like, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Um as much as I don't like to admit that, because <laughs> I, I know he'll, what he'll do is he'll probably record this snippet and he'll just play it to me. I'm like, what? So I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I, I need to admit it. Like, um, yeah, he, he has he has definitely changed, like, how I think, not even when it comes to, like, SEO, just, like, how I think when it comes to, like, life. Like, if you, if you'd spoke to me, like, five, six years ago, we probably wouldn't get along, mainly because of, like, my personality and like I was just a very very different person I was very very money orientated now I'm like all right I've got I've got money I can survive what's next like how, how can I level up people around me and like five six years ago if you'd spoke to me it would have been like what's next for Kaz what's next for Kaz and now it's it's completely shifted it's like how can I like how, how can I impact the people around me because I know if I make like I don't know five or six people money around me they'll make more money for me kind of thing. So it's all about like synergies, which is one thing that Dooley like talks about a lot. Um, so that that's that's obviously impacted me loads. Um, and then like business ventures as well, like five, six years ago, I was really naive. Like I would set something up and it would fail. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't think as to the reason why it would fail. I would just blame it all on myself. But in reality, it could have been like the SOPs, like, not many people know this. Five, six years ago, I tried setting up a link building brand. I tried setting up a PBN building brand. I tried setting up a content building brand. And this was before I met James. And they all failed, right? But then again, like now, I've got Searcher and that's a thriving company. I've got Autoblogging that does content, thriving company. Um, I don't have anything for PBNs. I might. Um, but it, it's, it's very interesting how you can meet one person and everything that you've tried like business venture wise or it could it could even be like seo website wise as well you, it could have failed but then it, like that one person could be the missing jigsaw or the missing part to your entire jigsaw type thing so yeah he, he has he has had a massive impact on like how i think strategically how i think in seo and also how i think in life as well and i think so often people only see the successes don't they they don't. Oh, yeah. They don't know about, about the, all those failures. And I think that was the one thing that the first time I met James, he he said something along the lines of, "In in the office, we celebrate failures." Mm-hmm. And like he he said, we, "We literally go around high fiving each other if something goes wrong because we can learn from it." And yeah. I think that's such a positive culture to foster. Uh, and it's something that, like I say, so many people don't see that. They just see the, 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 the positives. And, and you know, someone listening to this that might have failed two or three, four or five, maybe 10 times at whatever, but the 11th thing could be the thing that suddenly takes off. But I think you 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 improve your chances of future success if you look back and reflect on those things and, and where they went wrong. And I think that's really good that you can actually, even now you can look back at those and and think, 
well, okay, well, th- there were reasons why that happened, and actually, I've learned from them. So that's, yeah. that's brilliant. So, and, and actually, you're involved in so many things, aren't you? Now, so you do. So, for people that don't know, you're you're on the kind of, or you certainly in 2023, you were on the talking presentation circuit. That was kind of one of your big things in in 2023 you you've obviously got the seo stuff you've got your own projects that you're running with that you've got your link building agency you've just invested in a SaaS. uh so there's there's so many fingers in so many pies why 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 do so much do you know what before i'd met james i had this brilliant plan where i was going to set up dash seo.com I was going to set up dash pbn.com, dash content.com, dash links.com. And they all failed, right? So in the back of my head, I've always wanted to set up multiple things. And the reason for that as well is just think of it from a business point of view. If I have an SEO agency and then I have a separate link building agency and I also have a separate content marketing agency, a lot of regular seo agencies would need to first of all hire a content writer then they would need to hire a salesperson then they would need to hire a link builder so there's massive expenses there um so you say for example you get a client in for a grand a month you're probably looking at 60 70 percent overheads just on delivering all the deliverables but now because they're set up as, as separate entities if i was to go and set up an seo agency which i probably would never do well i say that but We'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, if I was to go and set up an SEO agency, the, the expenses for that SEO agency would be massively low. So just think of this, Jason. If I was to sign you up as an SEO client, I probably would have the highest chance of success for your website as opposed to just a regular SEO agency that's doing everything in-house. So that's why we've got everything set up. Now, because we, the reason why we invested into Searcheroo is because Two years ago, I want to say now, we were looking at all of our expenses and the biggest expense then was links. Like yeah. I want to say we were probably spending upwards of 150 grand a month on links mm-hmm. every single month across all of our websites. So it just made sense to acquire Searcheroo or a percentage of Searcheroo. Then obviously content became more and more important. Um, and then we're like, right, well, what can we invest in now? Well, like, what's our biggest expense? Again, it was content. So that's when we looked into, right, okay, what, what can we invest in? Can we invest in a, in, in a surfer SEO? Can we invest in a pop? Can we invest in a, in a phrase? Oh, what, what's this auto blogging? Oh, it's a, it's a new product. Right, okay, well, we can bring our expertise to the table of what a good quality article is. And if we have a really good developer like a, like Vabaf that we've got on board, we can feed him the information that he needs and he can essentially build it into autoblogging.ai. So it's, it's all about like minimizing the costs. So if, say, for example, we were looking at our costs in a year's time and we're like, right, oh, my God, we're spending half a million pound on um, PR, digital PR. Right, okay, let's go and acquire a PR agency. Um, so it's all about acquiring things that are like essentially running alongside our mm-hmm. um, already, already ventures. If that makes sense, yeah, absolutely. No, it makes makes total sense. I can I can see that. And but I think again, you need that's probably a very mature p- p- a way of looking at it, a very mature point of view, and something that you really need to kind of zoom out to be able to yeah. to to have that strategy and that foresight. And I think a lot of people potentially. You know, when you're when you're again, you said in the trenches, that's very, very difficult to do. And that's mm-hmm. something that I've certainly tried to do more of over the last twelve months. Uh any any tips for people on doing that? Is that is that something that only comes with experience? Is it something that comes with working with the right people and having those conversations? Is it something that you think you would have done without that guidance from from others or being in the, no. around so, those people? I um a massive control freak like five years ago right so when i did set up dash pbn and when i was building out like the one or two pbn orders that i got i was doing all the work myself right Mm. whereas james kind of essentially like came to me and i remember specifically he says why are you why why have you got the shovels like why aren't you hiring like a, a guy with a loader to come in and dig the massive hole for you. You are currently in the hole with a shovel, digging five feet deep, whereas you can just go and hire 
five people to do that. And then you can go and point out another hole, like, right, okay, we need five other guys for that hole, and we need six guys for this hole, and we need 10 guys for that. So, it, like, I always I always look at outsourcing as cheating, and it's not actually the case, um, especially if you can maintain the quality. Now, maintaining the quality is probably the harder part, especially, like, say, for example, like, I've, I've just recently set up my YouTube channel, right? And for the first three videos, I edited all the videos myself and also all, all the thumbnails myself, right? And I was like, oh, it's Control Freak Kaz coming out again. But the reason why I've done that, just so other people can understand it as well, is it's not Control Freak Kaz. It was actually the fact that I wanted the videos edited in a certain way. So I had to essentially visualize it, get it down on paper. And then after I've done that, I've now been able to go and hire a video yeah. uh, video editor. And I'm like, right, go and watch these free videos. This is the quality, this is the quality or the editing style that I want. Now I'm just gonna send you content, send you content. Um, so it, it's it's all about the SOPs, especially when it comes to like outsourcing and w when you are trying to take yourself out of the business. So if say for like prime example, we we we've got somebody in house, and all his job is is to go back in and first of all make certain that the SOP is up to date. Second of all, seeing if he can take out any steps, seeing if he can slimline that SOP. Can can he take the SOP from sixty points down to? 45 50 um and again like if you like some people will be thinking like why are you doing that like there's not like what you're saving five minutes if that and it's well and if you look at the bigger picture we've got 650 700 websites five minutes times 700 that's a lot of time you're yeah. saving um so that i i would probably say that maintaining quality but maintaining the SOPs and also never be, uh, blaming the staff like if the staff if a staff member does something wrong go and look to see as to why he or she's done that thing wrong is it the SOP or are they just being stupid because if if it's the same mistake that they've, that they've made six or seven times that okay then you can you can blame them but if it's a mistake like I don't know they didn't fill out the citation when they were filling out the form did you, did you have that mentioned on your SOP? No. Okay. Blame the SOP. Don't blame the staff. Mm. Again, you know, a great, a great attitude to have. And I, and I think, and ultimately that, yeah, that just shows the importance of those systems and processes that you have in place. Brilliant. Mm. Uh, let's, um, let's switch this a little bit then, because I'm, I'm really interested to dig in a little bit more into the, your persona. And like I said, over the last 12 months, which is probably when I first kind of came across you that you've you've definitely put a big you've had a big push on your online presence let's say and i know you're immensely proud of the fact that if you type kazra dash into into google now you have what's what's known as a knowledge panel and yep. They it, it basically describe. I don't know if that's a chat up line that you use nowadays, or <laughs> do, do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie was saying this, and I, I I have actually never used it as a chat up line, but I'm thinking I probably start start doing it because I remember in um, I don't know if you've ever watched this TV show How I Met Your Mother. Um, I've seen, it, yeah, I know I know of it. I've not. I don't basically know one it. one of the guys on there, and bearing in mind that this TV show was like released. I don't know, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And one of the guys on there, he's, he's known as like a, a player. He goes up to a girl and he's like, oh, I'm so glad that you didn't, that you don't know who I am. And she's like, what do you mean? What's your name? He, say, he says some name and then he goes to the toilet and she very quickly Googles it. And he's just made up all, he's made up a fake Wikipedia page saying that like, um, so and so donates four million pound to charity, and he, he he loves dogs and so on and so forth. So by the time he comes back from the toilet, she's just fallen in love with this made up like doctor <laughs> persona. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it works for him, it might work for me. Yeah, I mean, I, and and like you said, you've not used that strategy yet from a, a chatting up point of view. So so what? Why why do why have you put so much emphasis into your persona and? you know being being known and being mentioned out there on the internet is there a reason why what what's the point in doing it so i don't know if you remember this but probably about five months ago i i went on i i, I literally exploded within the seo industry where i went on so many podcasts mm -hmm. um and then basically the the main reason why i done that is because 
at the time James wasn't going on any podcast, so he was he 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 had the the mindset of right. I don't want to go on podcasts because there's no point me sharing knowledge when there's going to be somebody in, in, in his basement that's just going to be copying and pasting all my knowledge bombs and not giving anything back to the community. But now he's kind of cha changed his tone. And the reason for that is because essentially he, he wants to grow his personal brand. He wants to show to people like... He, he he has essentially to be fair we, we both essentially have took a lot from the community and one of the main reasons why i wanted to do it is because i wanted to give back to the community and he he's now essentially got that same mindset as well he's like well all right if if there are a thousand people that watch me and there's 10 percent that are just leeches that so be it but if i can help 900 people and they can grow and we might get a message in six months time saying hey kaz i've been able to sell my website for two and a half million or being able to flip my website for 500 grand like there's no better feeling than that um when it comes to like doing all these podcasts giving knowledge away for free um so that 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 was the main reason why i wanted to do it and then from from the podcast it kind of stemmed into like the talking on on stage and talking at conferences and stuff but then I had like a kind of a moment where I was like, this these podcasts are gonna be so cool because when I ha when I do have kids in like 10, 15 years time, they're gonna be able to watch these podcasts back and be like, Oh, look at look look what look what Kaz said here and look what dad done there. So I think that that's probably like another part of me. Well, I'm like, that would be quite cool where I like, can tell I you can... right now, my kids do not think it's cool that I do these podcasts. Oh, do they not? Right, okay. All. Right. Well, so I'm gonna stop I doing wouldn't, podcasts. Then. I wouldn't bank on that <laughs> if that's the reason why. <laughs> yeah, well, has there been a has there been a, a there must have been a knock on effect business wise? Because obviously if you your 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 persona is out there, you're potentially you know, generating a lot of trust in yourself. It's a lot of good exposure, good positive exposure. And you've got businesses that are serving a lot of these people. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, has, have you seen the difference there so on the bottom line? What one, like one thing that um, me and James both said is that right now is probably the best time to build a personal brand. Um whether you're a gardener, whether you're an SEO, or whether you're a PPC expert, whatever you are, go and build a personal brand. Mainly because with the rise of AI, AI can't do what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you can fake an AI podcast, right? But for me to actually sit down with Jason and have a one hour conversation, whether it's talking about life, whether it's talking about business, SEO, whatever the case may be, AI just can't do this. So, yes, from a trustworthiness point of view, it does massively help as well. Absolutely. And any tips for people that want to do that? Because you just said any this this is a you know growing a personal brand. It, it isn't something that necessarily just people in the SEO industry should do. This can be done by by pretty much anyone, can't it? Yeah. So any any tips? Is it just a case of getting out there? Choosing? Is it best to focus on one social channel? Is it best to kind of go all in? And don't stop. Like the the, the faster going. you can the faster you can scale out the faster you can be seen on um, as many platforms as you possibly can. Like I don't want to say this, but I, I'm going to have to now. <laughs> I've set myself a thirty day challenge. So for the next thirty days, including today, I'm going to be uploading a video every single day to my YouTube channel. Every single day. Um, and bearing in mind this is recorded on the 11th of December, so. Just bear this in mind. On Christmas, I will be uploading a YouTube chat, a YouTube video to my channel, and this will probably go out in around a month's time. So you can just go on Kaz's YouTube channel and take a look and see whether he fulfilled that. So what? Just uh, while we're here, we might as well plug it. What is the YouTube channel? Uh, it's just Kaz Dash. Fantastic, fantastic. So go and take a look and see if he fulfilled that promise. And and to be honest, I, I you know I, I'm a big admirer of yours. You do you do give out a lot of value in, in the videos that you create. So it's definitely one to follow. If you're interested in SEO, even, you know, digital marketing at any level, I think, I think there's, there's things that people can learn from going and following you there. So, so definitely go and do that. So going back to this personal brand, you've got a very, very unique name. 
Kazra Dash. I've never come across that name by anyone else. I think if you search it, I don't know how many Kazra Dashes there are in the world. There's a lot of Jason Millses. So how important is it to have that unique name? Because if you Google Jason Mills, I think there's a serial killer on page one. So that's not particularly helpful for me. <laughs> um, obviously, if you type in Jason Mills SEO or Jason Mills affiliate, then I, you know, I come up. But yeah. for me, not having a unique name, and I'm sure there'll be lots of people listening to this, does that help? Is that helpful in any way or not really? Do you know what? This is the most asked question that I probably get. Um, and yes, you are right. It is a unique name. Um, so I do feel like if if there isn't anyone, say, say for example, you're called Jason Dash, right? Pretty unique name. Obviously, I might change it to that because that sounds a lot cooler. <laughs> <laughs> it does, to be fair. <laughs> but it's still a unique name. There's a lot of Jasons. There's not a lot of Jason Dashes. Now, one thing that people do need to bear in mind is, well, is that it's not just about like Jason Mills just as is. It's also about like how many times is Jason Mills mentioned on, um, I don't know, a gardening website. If you say, for example, your your main money website is gardening based, are you mentioned on other gardening based websites saying that you're an expert gardener and you like you love to grow mushrooms on the weekends and you love to do strawberries on Thursdays and so on and so forth? It's all about like the bigger picture. A lot of people think I need a unique name, so I'm going to call myself Casual Dash, rank myself for the best SEO in the world, and I'm going to I'm, I'm, and my SEO website's going to explode. That's not necessarily the case. It's all it's mainly to do with like. Who else is mentioning um, your brand? So, for example, I've I've just come back from Chiang Mai SEO. I was mentioned on their website. That's still deemed as EEAT. Now, if Jason Mills was mentioned on the Chiang Mai SEO website, that's still mentioned. That's still EEAT building. Um, now, back to what you were saying before. There's tons of Jason Mills. There's only there's probably only one Jason Mills um, within SEO, and Google is becoming like smarter every day to understand that there's Jason Mills that was mentioned at Chiang Mai SEO or Jason Mills that was mentioned on Matt Diggy's uh, website. It's the Jason Mills. They can Burnham. tie them together. Yeah, exactly that. And one other thing as well, um, you can also t help tie things in together with um, same as schema. Mm -hmm. So if say, for example, you were to go and build a page to do with who is Jason Mills on your SEO consultancy website, you can then do same as schema to your Facebook, your Instagram, your Pinterest, all of the guest posts that are mentioning you. And then Google's like, right, okay, Jason Mills, it's that guy that was mentioned on Chiang Mai, mentioned on Diggy's channel, mentioned on Nathan Gotch's YouTube channel, et cetera, et cetera. So you're essentially educating Google to say, listen, this is, this is the Jason Mills that people are, are wanting, not the serial killer that's killed 15 people. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I would like to uh, get that pushed down. We might need to do some reputation management there. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, let's let's move away from that again. I, I want to get delve into your psyche a little bit and your kind of attitude. So what what is it what is it that keeps you going and you know in terms of you've had a lot of success. What is it that drives you now? Is there is there an end game? Is it something that you think you would just continue to do? Because Again, we, we search Casual Dash. It tells us you're a Scottish entre entrepreneur. You've definitely got that entrepreneurial mindset. And I, I speak to so many people who say it's very, very difficult to switch that off. You know, when I go to bed, I can't switch that off. Is Could there possibly ever be a point where you, you don't deem yourself an entrepreneur, do you think? So, again, when I was 15, setting up websites in my room, I actually had the goal to retire when I was 25. And now I'm, I'm I'm 26 now, as of as of last month, as of a day on um, as as of a month yesterday. Um, the the simple answer is no. I don't think I will ever retire. Um, one thing I will be doing is pivoting. So everyone's obviously saying, "Oh my God, SEO's dead." It's all about pivoting, right? So okay your strategy is dead but what's the next strategy that we can do it, is it parasite seo like i know we were just chatting on about that before we went live is it actually building a trustworthy brand that people will come back to or is it okay i'm gonna start doing ppc and paid ads like you, you always need to find that pivot point and essentially just hold that bucket 
and go to where it's like leaking next. So if if the hole in, in the ceiling's right here, but the next algorithm update goes behind me, okay, I'm going to grab my, this bucket and I'm going to move that bucket over there. So that, that that that's that's all it is when it comes to the SEO game and the entrepreneurial game. Like, don't get me wrong, there's outside of Google and Google's algorithm, there's there's things that can go wrong there. Like for example. Um, you're, you you could lose a key member of your staff in just a regular business and you're like, oh my God, that's 15% of my revenue gone, right? Oh, mm -hmm. Because they're, they've been poached by a competitor. So it's it's all about how adaptable you are in, in business and also in SEO. Like, oh, okay, right, m my my key main me member of staff's been poached by um, my, my main competitor. How, how, how can I fix this? Okay, do, do I need to hire two people to replace that one person? And then I can maintain that 15% growth month on month. It, it's, it's, all, it's all about how, how you position yourself in the market. And I feel like the people that aren't adaptable are, are the ones that will quit easily on, on entrepreneurial lifestyle and also will quit easily on, on SEO as well. Okay, there's been an algorithm update in the past two, three months. What are you doing now to change that? Or, or have you just given up? If you've given up, okay, I'll, I'll buy your website because I'll be able to flip it in 12 months' time. Yeah, and, and that's life, isn't it? I don't, it doesn't matter whether it's Google, whether it's SEO, whatever your online venture, there's always going to be hiccups along the road. Life yeah. just isn't, unfortunately, you know, it, you never get that kind of uh, constant growth, do you? That's just linear. It, it, there's always going to be things that come up along along the way. I, so. I said that, and um, I said that in, in my podcast, and it was the key. It was one of the key um, slides in it in in my Chiang Mai podcast. Growth is never linear. Um, I, I've I've been saying that at so many events yeah. now. I think Dooley's now saying it on podcast. <laughs> like even I'm saying it now. Look, and I haven't yeah. even seen it. You've just sent it to me through osmosis. That's how <laughs> powerful your brand is. <laughs> but um, no, honestly, it is all about growth. Like, is not linear. Like, for there to be light days, there obviously has to be dark days. Um, like there there was a podcast that I was listening to recently, um, and this guy, he, he's basically sold a massive software brand for a hundred million. Um, he raised capital. And one of the questions was like, how do you raise capital? And he says, I wouldn't go into the office because there'd be a hundred things going wrong, but I had to be in a good mindset to go to these investors that are going to invest 5 million pound or $5 million into my brand. And it's so true. Like it's, it's all about the mindset. Like, for example, I think the, the biggest thing that's been, helping me with my growth is going to the gym like yeah. if if i if i have a bad day if a website's been hit or if a, me if a member of staff's messed up okay right that's fine they've messed up now i'm gonna go to the gym and then i'm gonna release some stress in the gym whether it's i don't know doing a chest press or a bicep curl or whatever and then i'm after that i can think clearly then and then i can go back reevaluate the situation and be like right okay we need to fire that staff he's done it 15 times we need to get rid or in some case or in a lot of cases it's like right okay we don't need to fire him we actually need to change the sop because the sop is out of date it's not the, it's not the member of staff and um, so it, i i think having like a a fitness goal or like something that keeps you active alongside your business helps you massively, massively. Yeah. Agree. I agree a hundred percent with that. And this, it, it's almost like meditation to an extent, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, and the other, the other one that I would throw in there is sleep. So the, there's certain things that if you've got a problem that you can't overcome, you actually sleep on it, your brain then processes that information. And then the next day you can, you, you could be something that you staring at a screen, you just cannot figure out. On a Thursday, you go to bed, you, you sleep, you wake up, your brain has done all this crazy stuff in the night, and then suddenly you look at it and you go, I know, that's it. That's what I've got to do. Yeah. So that's another I, um, thing I would throw in there. For, for the longest period ever, my Twitter bio uh, was, I turn caffeine into websites. And the reason for that was because I'd, I'd be sat there like coding away, doing like a short code or a plugin or whatever. And I'd get to the point where I'm like, I'm 600 lines and this plugin isn't working. Like, well, what the hell's going on? And all I would literally do is I'd take my cup downstairs, I'd start making myself a brew, and I'm like, oh, line 324, yeah. it's because <laughs> of that line. So I'd just quickly run back upstairs. I'd be like, right, I need to delete line 324, and it, it would work. 
so for that that's the reason why my twitter bio i turn caffeine into love it old. love it i'd love to see a kind of history of your twitter bios over the years <laughs> if we go from like the last 12 months to maybe in five years time so actually that brings me on i just want to ask you the question do you set goals for yourself and if so are they financial goals like you mentioned followers earlier do you have goals like that that you set or is it more of a subconscious thing yeah I or do you not even so. think about it i have a goal in mind right now and that's to hit 2,000 subscribers. Um, and I want to ideally do that in January. Um, and for the longest period of time, what I would do is I would set goals and I'd say, right, okay, if, if my website gets, I don't know, 300 clicks in a month, I would, I'll, I'll do something. And then it would hit the 300 clicks and I'd be like, oh, I'm not satisfied. So then I'd be like, right, okay, if I do 450, I'll do, I'll, I'll definitely reward myself. And it would hit the 450 <laughs> next month, wouldn't reward myself. So this time I've said, right, 2,000 subscribers and I'm going to go abroad. Um, and that's probably going to happen in January. Um, I do feel like having set clear goals, whether it, they are short-term goals and whether they are long-term goals, both are equally as important. So right now, my short-term goal is 2,000 subscribers. Then by April, I want to be hitting at least 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And I've said, if I hit two, if I hit 10,000 by April, which I will, um, I'm going to go to Bali for a week because I've always wanted to go to Bali. So I'm going to reward myself with that. Um, but yeah, it, like, I, so the 2,000 short-term and the 10,000 long-term, but then I also have like, other goals so like what we were mentioning before we went live i've got websites and i'm like i'm tracking their performance i'm like right okay mm. if if i can get this website from doing a thousand clicks a month to five thousand clicks a month that's indirectly going to impact my bank balance as well because yeah. i'm going to have more visitors on the website more people um filling out the forms or whether if, if it's affiliate so i do have certain goals in place but again it depends what hat i've got on so if it's my I don't know, viewership. I'm, I'm all about Twitter. How many likes I'm getting on Facebook, how many f subscribers I'm getting, how many views I'm getting on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if it's like websites or if it's, for example, the SaaS that we've not even spoke about, it's all about like MRR, how, how many people are signing up to it, um, how can we improve the tool? Can 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 we make that 2% adjustment to make certain that the, the entire content's more uh, concise that means that ultimately in my, our entire um, user base is going to love the tool more and they're going to recommend it more which is going to impact the MRR so it is all about like I do have a lot of goals but it, it just depends like what I'm working on at the time absolutely no I love it love it um, right let's uh, let's delve into we've, we're coming towards the end of this pod but I, I still think I can get a few more nuggets out go for it. so we're going to try and get those out um, I just want to go back to your education so how important do you think your education was in getting to this point, was it really important? Was it kind of irrelevant? Did it shape you or help you in any way, shape or form? Because obviously there's a fair old expense to, to university now. So, you know, it's not, it's not, not in Scotland. A to be oh, okay. Scotland, okay. Yeah. Scot Scot yeah. Scotland is free, but I think you just need to pay for the bursary fees, which is like mm -hmm. nothing in comparison to England. Um, going back to your question, is university important? Um, this is quite a controversial view. Uh, I personally don't think that you need to go to university to achieve everything that I've done. Um, if somebody said, could you have achieved everything that you've done today without going to university? I would probably say yes. Um, and the reason for that, again, going back to what I was saying before, self-taught, um, a lot of the things that I was doing on YouTube, I was, lear I was learning in university a year later and I'm like, well, I've already done this. So there's no point. Um, honestly speaking, everything, bearing in mind, like my degree or my bachelor's degree is very close to what I'm doing now, yeah. interactive media design or interactive marketing design. So you could, you could say, well, that's got something to do with digital marketing and SEO. And it's like, well, not really. Like they taught me how to develop an app. I've, mm -hmm. I'm 26 now. I've still not developed an app. Yeah. I, I probably don't want to. Um, I it, like if it came down to me, I would probably say that go to university if you want to become a lawyer or a doctor, yeah. and 
I feel like that those courses should be free for anyone because we need more of them. Mm. Um, that that's that's my opinion um, on like de- like degrees and stuff like that. And then not only that is well, like imagine this, Jason. You go to university today, and they're teaching you about SEO, right? And you you don't you don't graduate for another three years time. So oh. everything you learn today, there's going to be a help, there's going to be another helpful content update. There's going to be another spam update. There's going to be another core algorithm update. Yeah. So if anyone's watching this thinking, oh, I need to go to university to learn SEO, definitely not. Yeah, and, and that applies to anything online, doesn't it? Because the, yeah. the rate the, the rate of progress is so fast now that you they just can't deliver something actionable that is going to be used, usable in three years' time. Just, I, I think it's almost impossible to do. Oh, yeah, massively. And, and, and not only that, it's probably even faster now because of, of the rise of ChatGBT. It's yeah. like it's scary times especially yeah. if if you have just gone in to do a degree or whatever like you could probably learn your entire degree on chat gbt in 20 minutes <laughs> yeah no you're absolutely right i think there's i i, I really like the, the point that you made about certain professions that yeah you of course you're going to need to go for that um mm-hmm. but the thing is it's such a it's such a money-making institution the, 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 isn't the, it? the, the thing a, is it's like as an 18 year old like let, let's take a step back and say right okay 18 year old Kaz, he wants to go and become a pilot right so a pilot license is like 25 grand right you you could go and apply for a loan and they will not give you that loan because you don't have any credit history you've not been working none of that but they'll give you a student loan for a degree that you might not even pass and you might not you, you might go for a year but you're like actually i don't want to be a lawyer i want to be a mathematician and it's like why are they just giving out student loans to people like that like again it's it's, it's not it's not the people's fault it's how the education system yeah, is actually system, laid out yeah. and i think and, and like you say with with the way the world is now the system probably isn't fit for purpose because you think how it's how much it's changed in the last 30 years it's going to change five ten times as much in the next five years and and yeah. the system just can't cope with that i agree uh okay so uh so this is a question that i'm asking most people and it's th- this idea of working online or making money online is that do you think that's a pathway that is suitable for everyone or do you think there's certain people that that probably doesn't necessarily suit? Like we, we've both talked a little bit about this entrepreneurial mindset and having that drive. How important is that? And do you think there are probably people out there that just don't have that? I feel like you need to be very, very disciplined um, to be, first of all, to be entrepreneurial, but second of all, to be able to work anywhere um, that you want. So one thing that I want to do this year is be able to go abroad for two, three months and be able to run everything yeah. as successfully as I, as I am doing right now, if not more. Um, and I know in the back of my head, I'm like, right, okay. I even though I, I might be in a, I might be in Bali on a beach, right? But I know that I need to wake up seven a.m. or five a.m. or six a.m. and do all, everything on my task list. Otherwise. It's just gonna. I'm gonna come back to a load of mess, and everything's gonna not be working. Um, or there might be certain members of staff, and they're like, "Well, you didn't give us anything to do, so we've not been working." So it's like, right? I know in the back of my head, I need to do all of these things. If you do have that drive, it will work. If you are like, right, okay, I'm in. I'm in Bali. I'm gonna sleep in till nine. I'm gonna go and have a coffee gonna go for a swim till 12 and then i'm gonna get the laptop out for 30 minutes oh the sun's coming down oh that's quite nice i'm gonna go watch the sunset if you're like that it's not gonna work whether but if you have serious drive and you're like right no i'm gonna block out five hours a day to do everything on my task list every single day and then from again you could be like from 7 a.m till 10 um that like one thing that i've not mentioned i was in vietnam for a week um two weeks ago and every single day, I was still on my laptop from like, I don't know, 8 a.m. till 12. And then I'd go and have lunch and maybe do a few sightseeing and stuff like that. And then from like 9 p.m. till midnight, I was still on my laptop. So even though people were seeing like the holiday posts and stuff like that on the Twitter and on Instagram and stuff, I was still working on my laptop, probably still more than a lot of people that are in office. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, if if you can regiment your day correctly, then go for it. It, it definitely will work. If you can, and if you need somebody that's on top of you asking you questions and stuff like that and keeping you accountable then you might need that as well and again like you you can do a hybrid as well like you you can like sometimes i will message in a group saying i am going to record free videos today and the reason why i do that is because they'll keep me accountable at the end of the day yeah. james will message me saying like yeah did you record those free videos and I'll, I'll do it, but it's just subconsciously I'll, I'll do it and I'll say it and I'll, I'll know that he'll keep me accountable for that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a bit like you going to the gym again, isn't it? I did exactly yeah. the same thing when I first started going to the gym, got in a, a WhatsApp group with other people. We did progress picks at the start and at the end. And, and, and that it, you know keeps you accountable. Uh, and yeah. the, exact, like you say, the exact same what, applies with business. One other thing as well, because you've said WhatsApp group and we we're talking about failures as well, is um, we have a WhatsApp group dedicated for failures. So like, it doesn't even need to be like SEO or business related. It could be like, oh, I went, I went in a bar, started chatting to a girl and she turned me down, right? And it's not to like take the piss out, or well, it is to take the piss out of each other, but you're making failures like acceptable because growing up, like we're, we've all been yeah. grown up to say, "Oh, if, if you, you you can't you can't go and set up your own business, Jason. What if you fail?" <laughs> right? It, it's it's always like looked upon, or you, you look down upon failures, right? Whereas if you actually flip it into a positive, and you're like, "Oh, I can't believe she she stood you up on that day, or she she threw a drink in your face because you because you were a bit rowdy or whatever," right? But you're you're turning a failure into like a positive and you're like right okay next time i know not to say that pitch out of line don't yeah. don't go and look at my, yeah. in my knowledge panel but it's like you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're making failures more acceptable and then subconsciously in the back of your head the next time you go and approach a girl or you go and set up a business you don't you don't mind failing because you're like oh what, what's the what's the worst that can happen she'll just turn around and, and laugh in face like what well, all right so i'll move on to the next Brilliant. So, Who'd have known this would turn into a dating podcast as well? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. We're getting to the business end now then. So let's 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 take you into a scenario where everything's crumbled and you're starting from scratch. And you've got the knowledge that you've got now. You've got 500 quid to invest in this. And then after that, you've got to get a job because you need to survive. You need to eat. You need to pay your rent. What would you do? What would be, and, and, and we're talking still about online, making money online in a legal way. Because <laughs> <laughs> I could see your brain ticking there. <laughs> so just to throw that in, what 500 quid, do you start have, an online business, what would you do, do? Do I have the connections that I have now? Go on, I'll let you. So, the easy what, what I really want to do here is, is you know, say this is something that anyone could do. So obviously not everyone's going to have those connections. but Right, okay. So the easy answer is go and set up an OnlyFans and sell feet pics. But, uh, yeah, and that, I suppose I'm, that is legal. <laughs> but I'm not a cop out and I would never do that. So what I would probably do is I would probably set up a local lead generation website and with 500 pound i reckon i could probably do with the correct niche selection and you obviously said i've got the knowledge that i've got now i reckon i could probably build 10 websites with 500 pound 10 okay. good websites as well um obviously I, I would need to go into for example um the correct locations and stuff like that, making sure that the, the difficulty isn't too much. Like if I was to just go and blast 500 pound on 10 websites in London, you're going to struggle, right? Yeah. But if, if you go on the outskirts, whether it's like, I don't know, 10 miles or outside of London, you'll be able to do a lot of damage with 500 pound. Um, so that's probably what I would do. Um, again, you could go down the Parasite SEO route as well. Parasite is obviously doing really well. Um, you could go down that route. I definitely wouldn't do drop shipping. I definitely wouldn't do e-commerce. Um, not is that, and that's just because of the time that that's going to take, or you need the, more the, investment. The, or? the time and also the investment. Um, like I, I, 
acquiring a customer for drop shipping ain't, ain't cheap. Like yeah. you could test, like for example, not many people know this about me, but I used to run a Facebook ads agency and you could essentially wipe out all your 500 pound budget acquiring just one person uh, on, fa on Facebook ads. So definitely wouldn't do that. Um, I, I, I still think to this day, there's a lot of local areas that you can rank for very, very, very mm. cheaply. And you can you can very quickly scale that website out to earning like two, three, four grand um, a month. Like I don't re I don't remember if if you've ever seen one of these tweets, but I've done a tweet. It must have been like six or seven months ago. And bearing in mind, like a lot of the people on SEO Twitter, they are like the the niche website guys that will go and yeah. blast out six hundred articles, and they've got Azoic ads or whatever AdSense that they've got, or they might even be doing affiliate, right? So. I remember specifically, it was like a website that I just recently launched. It might have had like 1,200 clicks over the space of three months. So it wasn't it wasn't big numbers. It was like, what, three, 400 yeah. clicks a month? And I got, and basically what I said was 1,200 clicks, it generated me like 6,700 um, either dollars or pounds. I don't remember the currency. And I got so much shit for that post. And the reason for that was because people didn't know how to monetize. So everyone was going down the Zoic AdSense route. And they were like, there's no way you've, you've generated $6,700 with 1,200 clicks. It's, it's unheard of, right? And it's like, well, you've, you've not heard how I'm monetizing the actual website. It's a lead generation site. And the, the thing is, with lead generation sites, the ranking the website is the easy part. Finding the client's the hard part, yeah. and finding the client is the actual cheap part because all you do is you either cold call them yeah. or you, you email outreach to them. Um, and if you have a business savvy mind and you can get like a really good deal, like say, for example, we, we went into law, right? A lot of people would say, no worries, Jason, you're a lawyer. I'll give you this website for, I don't know, let's say 50 pound a lead, right? But me knowing what I know, personal injury, you might get six grand for that one claim, right? And I'm like, whoa, 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 Jason, I want half of that. I want three grand out, out of your six grand claim because if it wasn't for me, no disrespect, you wouldn't have had the lead in the yeah. first place. So you should be you should be saying, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll happily pay you the three grand um in commission so it's, it's all about like how you actually structure the deal as well when it comes to like setting up these local rank and rent sites because again like a lot of like i i'm fairly open with like the industries that i'm in um a lot of people could then enter the exact same industries as me and not make a single penny and mm -hmm. it's all down to or they might make us they might make a few hundred pound here and there but that exact same niche i, I might be earning five grand a month in mainly yeah. down to the actual way that I've structured the deals. It's not like, if I, if I send you 100 leads, it's not all the same um, in the same amount that I'm getting per leads. So some leads I might be earning two grand, some leads I might be earning a flat fee. Um, so yeah. Nice, great answer. Right, we're going to wrap this up in a second, but before we do, I've got one final question for you. Uh, but before that, just where can people find you, Kaz? Um, on Twitter, Kajra Dash, and on YouTube as well, Kajra Dash as well. So do make sure that you go and check Kazra out at those places. If you're watching this on YouTube, those links will be in the description. And if you're listening on a podcast, they'll also be in the description. So do go and check him out there. And final question then, one tip for being successful online, what would it be? Fail as much as you can. Don't stop failing. Like again, like like what we've been. I feel like that's that's been the theme of this podcast. Fail as much as you can, but again, like reflect on your failures. Um, e even even if it means you need to set up a, a Google note and saying, right, okay, I've started this and it failed. Why did it fail? Um, and you might see a, co a a commonality. Like for example, you might have went and set up five businesses and they've all failed. And you're like, right, why is it failed? Is it because you're in the trenches doing the actual digging the holes? Um, are you not scaling out your staff? Is it your SOPs? Um, is it your SEO strategy if it's a website, for example? Um, so, yeah, I feel like failing um, helps massively when it comes to the actual peak, when it comes to success. Um, yeah, fail as much as you can. Brilliant. And that's probably going to be the 
the title for this podcast episode, I should think. Uh, absolutely yeah. fantastic guest, Kazra. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure from me. Uh, I think you've, you've shared, you've been very gracious with the knowledge bombs that you've shared there. So thank you so much for that. And hopefully we'll, we'll see you again at some point. Thanks for having me on.